Jack Deal number two. And we'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching Kansas and Louisville. Kansas knocking off Louisville 71 to 69 in the first part of our NBC doubleheader in many areas of the country. Marv Albert with Al McGuire. We're talking to you from the spanking new Dean's Dome, the Smith Center on the campus of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, a battle of number one and number three. And right here, we're tied at nine. Georgia Tech and North Carolina even at nine. Five and a half minutes gone by, first half. Bruce Dalrymple, guy in the line right now for Georgia Tech. Carolina has to stop him. He just won't accept losing. Bruce Dalrymple, he, he gets rebounds, he keeps the ball alive, he steals. Outstanding ball. Play. Jeff Lebo handling the ball. He just came on along with Ranzino Smith. Dean Smith going to the bench. Dougherty finding pressure. And it's a five-second violation. Here's Kevin Madden. Coming on for North Carolina, six-foot-five freshman replacing Warren Martin. And Bobby Kremens inserting Craig Neal, 6'5", sophomore from Washington, Indiana. And Neal has been playing well recently. Four turning it over. So the Tar Heels will come out of the backcourt. Jeff Lebo handling a 6'2 freshman who Dean Smith said the most fundamentally sound freshman he's ever seen. A lot of people compare him with Jerry West. They collapse on Ford. Oh. And the foul, Dalrymple will go to the line. Dalrymple plays the guard position. With this set now, he's playing a small forward. They got their small team in to match up with North Carolina's small team. Dalrymple is out of Harlem, but he spent his four years in the prep school in Vermont, I think. Two shots! First Dalrymple bothered by a groin pull. Still struggling, wearing a girdle apparatus for support. Did not hurt him against Duke. He was his usual scrappy self and poured home 21 points. Not a good foul shooter, though, 65%. And the shuffling continues. Smith and Hale return. Martin is back. Wolf departs. Cameo appearance for Ranzino Smith. He sits down. Dean is setting up for the second half. Again, trying to create a foul situation where Georgetown is weak. Seven-man rotation to a ten-man rotation. Easy, easy. Smith and Lebo now in the backcourt. Look out away from the ball. Lebo called for the foul as Price hit the deck. They constantly try to get back door. Georgia Tech is overplaying. Mark Price is certainly a, an impressive young man. You think offensively, but he might be a better defensive ball player than he is offensive. You think he has the best shooting range in he college has basketball? He goes in tight droughts now and then. Last year when uh, Georgetown knocked him out of the NCAA, he had a drought. Sally up high. He won! That's a rare turnover from Mark Price. Only the 30th turnover that he has committed this season when you consider how frequently he handles the ball. That is a terrific record. Wayne Farrell has come back in. Bruce Darrell sitting down now. They put Price on Lebo now. Watch Price stay on Lebo. Lebo, the outstanding freshman from Pennsylvania. Father's a great high school coach. Here's Hal. He didn't think he'd get that far. I thought he got away with a walk that time. 15. 15. Watch out for the alley oop now. That was last, last touch by Georgia Tech, so Tar Heels maintain possession. Dougherty on the jump hook. And rebounded by four. Price 
Price off the turn. Beautiful pass. Steve Hell. Both clubs having their problems right now, not able to hit. Pharrell from Price and Georgia Tech up by the score of 12-11. Georgia Tech wants a running game. I think maybe North Carolina should pull up a little bit. But again, Dean Smith is looking for the second half. And Sally starts it up. Okay, Sally, we know you can dribble. Pull up, pull up, seven feet dribbling. Hold it. a chance to dribble they want to show off Carolina by one and the foul called on Sally he, he you catch Sally losing the ball too much dribble he throws it out and once Smith gets on his afterburner forget it a timeout will be back in a moment Capacity crowd, 21,444 at the Dean Smith Student Activity Center on the campus of North Carolina and Chapel Hill. Georgia Tech has turned it over eight times. North Carolina four. We've had eight changes of lead. North Carolina leading by one at this point, 13 to 12. Nine minutes in, first half. Dougherty getting position. And Carolina leads by three. Gets Brad Dougherty the ball within three feet of the basket. It's almost an automatic. Pharrell off the spin gives it back. Here is Neal. Yes. Greg Neal, the 6'5", 166-pound sophomore. Very thin. They call him Noodle because yes. he's so thin. <laughs> one point, North Carolina lead. Hold that one on Doherty. Sally and Doherty were bumping. That's a second, so two apiece on Doherty and Sally. Yeah, but that's not important to Dean Smith as bad it is for coming, Crimmins, excuse me. Because Dean has a four-man rotation in there with Tom Thompson, where Sally's only one guy on Georgia Tech. Sally only a 59% foul shooter. He is two for two from the line. Not able to take advantage of the one and one. Boy, and one and one's early. There's 10 minutes and 12 seconds left for the first half. Sally. Stopped by Sally, had to change the shot. Good D by Smith. Here's Neal. Kenny Smith comes away with it. Extra pass, and it cost. It's a three-on-one, led by Price. Six points for Mark Price, and Georgia Tech by one. Dollardy stopped by Sally. What a block Sally made that time. Then Hammonds reached in and grabbed Doherty's wrist. Watch this block by Sally. Almost an impossible block from the back. As a matter of fact, I think he did catch him with his hip. Here where the freshman Hammonds reaches in. Here's a shot again from another angle, floor angle. But his hip might have caught the back side of, uh, of Doherty. Now Hammond reaches in here and there's the foul. Right there. Tom Hammonds committing his first. Curtis Hunter has come on for the first time for North Carolina. 6'5 junior replacing the 6'5 freshman, Kevin Madden. Two-shot foul. Brad Dougherty, a 69% free throw shooter. Bruce Darrymbull back on the floor to give Mark Price a rush. We're tied at 16. 9.20 left, first half. Pressure off the court, with Price out of there now. 
They want to give Price a blow. That's what Neal means more to this team than anything else. And off the steal. Dougherty. Hammonds got caught on Dougherty on the mismatch, and Carolina by two. They won't keep Price out too long. As I was saying earlier, Neal gives him this luxury this year. Watch your five count. Hale doing a nice job on Dow Ripple. And this crowd is going wild. Excellent defense on both ends. Aggressive. Shot clock is down to 10. Georgia Tech, though, maintaining possession. On the uh, alternate possession, there's the arrow pointing in the direction of the Yellow Jackets. And the crowd really getting into it. Cheering for the uh, Tar Heels' defensive effort. Who says you can't have 100% imported hops and a less filling beer? Only world aging and a less filling beer. Smooth, super premium taste and a less filling beer. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can. Have it all. Presenting the Volkswagen GTI. Car and driver calls it one of the 10 best cars of 1986. What to say? Celebrate. Buy a new GTI by February 28th, and Volkswagen will give you back up to a full year's interest. Get the deal of the year on one of Car and Driver's 10 best cars of 1986. What to say? Welcome back to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. 8.17 left first half, and North Carolina leading Georgia Tech by the score of 18-16. And we'd like to take a moment to uh, thank the folks at WXIA Television. That's Channel 11 in Atlanta. In fact, they handle the uh, Bobby Crennan's show. And we were having some technical difficulties uh, at the start, and uh, people at WXIA allowing NBC to uh, plug into their equipment. And uh, if not... We'll be doing radio at this moment, uh, Al. Well, WXIA, NBC owes you. Thank you very much. Mr. Art Watson, our president, wanted to make sure that we said thank you. Bobby Cremins in his fifth season as head coach at Georgia Tech. In fact, Cremins, wow. oh, look out. <laughs> Cremins and his yellow jackets will be the subject of Al's halftime feature. Well, the halftime feature's on building a dynasty. Here's Sally. Gets it back out. Hobson. Yes. Hobson needed that. He's been trying to flatten his play. Both ends. He pulled down the board, went down and scored from the foul line. 15 feet out. He bottomed it in. Dave Hobson, a starter most of last season, lost the starting job this year again. It's Hobson off the board. Hale going all the way. And rebound is missed by him. Biggest lead of the game, a six-point lead for the Tar Heels. Surprisingly, it's coming with Doherty and Martin out of there. Oh. Gotta get the ball back to Mark. Here should be two. Wide open, yes. Mark Price with his fourth field goal. 22-18, North Carolina by four. <laughs> Want to get the ball inside to Wolf. Here's Hunter, yes. from Durham, North Carolina, connecting out his first field goal. And the Tar Heels lead the Yellow Jackets by six. Trying to wear the Yellow Jackets out with multiple substitutions, more than normal. 
Sally with the step and the bucket. 24-20. Georgia Tech down by four. First field goal for John Sally. Four points in all. Physically, he's starting to drain a little bit, Sally. Here's Lebo. And the rebound. And a foul. Joe Wolf with nine points. And will go to the line looking for a three-point play. The red trees are starting to show. Watch the ball come off the boards. Inside position for Wolf. That's all she wrote. Tom Hammonds committing the foul, his second. Dean Smith with some new troops. Four new faces step onto the floor. He's going to have to move Wolf out. If Wolf wasn't taking the foul, he's trying to get out of there. If you notice, Wolf on the foul line has his hands on his hips. Obviously, that means he is tired. He should probably miss this foul shot the entire Sometimes that affects the foul shot. Let's see what happens. But again, he's an excellent shooter. That's what you say, protecting both ends of the bat. Arbitrage. Or Very nice. Like <laughs> and now Wolf sits down. Warren Martin has come on. Okay. That's nice. You put in two seven-footers. And the foul called on Ranzino Smith. Ranzino Smith's father, a tremendous basketball fan, named his son after Sammy Ranzino, All-American at North Carolina State, back in the 50s. Well, he's the only young man, I think, ever, and I could be wrong here, to play for Dean Smith that's out of Chapel Hill. That's correct. Now, incredible how you come up with these facts. Oh, out of sight. That's rare. Mark Price, an 81% foul shooter, not able to hit him. I would say it's time for a timeout, Bobby. North Carolina by nine, 6 10 left, first half. Look out. Got himself a break there. Don't let this game get away from Georgia Tech. Again, Dean Smith keeping the pressure on. In come Lebo, out goes Smith. Want to put pressure up court, especially on Price. Sally's breathing so hard. I think they need a timeout, then milk that timeout, make it a minute and a half, two minute timeout. Just to lay around. And the crowd has been getting into it as Georgia Tech moves to the front court. Here they come. Carolina presents so many problems. Now Steve Hale returns. There's Hale. Kevin Madden sits down. Nine point Tar Heel lead. Dougherty. Thirteen for Brad Dougherty. He's the high man. Joe Wolf with ten. Mark Price has eight. A good steal. Committing the foul. What's happening here, Marv, I believe, is that Coach Bobby Crimmins is expecting the, the uh, commercial timeout to come, which should come with four minutes to go in the first half here. There's five minutes and 23 seconds left. There'll be no game. Georgia Tech is dragging, absolutely dragging. The pace was too fast earlier, only because of the multiple substitutions. And Dean has thrown in 12 guys, I believe. Kenny Smith, an 86% free throw shooter out of Malloy High School in Queens. You can see Sally on the bench over there. He's, he's sitting back, he's breathing hard. And it's a 12-point North Carolina lead. The TV timeout still with a minute and 20 to go. It'll come at the four-minute mark. That was a bad pass. Darren Bull able to save it. They need a basket this time down. Yeah. That's your fine mark. Oh, there's John Sally huffing and puffing. That's about a minute and a half ago. He's still back there in a leisure position, freezing hard. North Carolina by 
by 10. Oh, hands. beautiful back door. Mark Price saved it. Bring him right back in the ball game. North Carolina by eight. Oh, beautiful pass by Jeff Lebow. His first field goal of the game, 34-24. Tar Heels lead by 10. Wolf and Pops will come back in and take Doherty and Martin out of there. Keeping the pressure on. Dean smells blood. He wants to get rid of the pussy. It's a great ball club. They're starting five. Could be the best in the country. 12 points for Price. I think Wolf and this guy pops in are in the 6 10 6 11. Darrell will commit that foul a second. Steve Hell, who led the ACC last year in free throw shooting, broke the record of York Larisi with an 88 percent foul shooting percentage, has given North Carolina a 10 point lead. Now, here's the commercial timeout. We'll be right back. Watch the range from Mark Price. You talk about downtown Brown. Here's downtown Oklahoma. From Enid, Oklahoma, an oddity here today, both backcourts feature uh, one player from New York City and one from Oklahoma. Steve Hale from Jenks, Oklahoma. Kenny Smith from Queens. Bruce Darable from... New York City and Mark Price from Enid, Oklahoma. And two of the best backcourts, uh, if not the very best, in the nation. Mark Price has 12 points off six field goals. Again, the pressure, Farrell able to save it. 3.40 to go. First half, Smith off the steal. One on one with oh, Price. Oh, oh, what a block! Here's Smith. Unbelievable. See you later, fella. Now watch this rebound coming up. Pop, put it up there so we catch this rebound. Klein! Here it comes, Klein! Okay. And Popson, get out of the foul. Georgia Tech not able to take advantage of the one and one. North Carolina by 10, 3.20 left, first half. Marv Albert, Al McGuire from the Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Probably saving Sally for the second half. Oh, line drive by Thompson. North Carolina by 12, 38, 26. It matches their longest lead. Back comes the crowd to work on D. Oh no, he caught the walk. Watch Popson. Ni nice and fluid move. Playing one of his better games in his three years here at North Carolina. And that foul was called on Bruce Darrimple. Offensive foul, and he has three. Replaced by Craig Neal. And that's a major loss. Third foul. Picked up by Darable. Two and a half to go in this first half. Number one, North Carolina, record of 19 and 0, 4 and 0 in the ACC, and number three, Georgia Tech, at 16 and 1. A lot of bumping and grinding underneath offensively. Pretty hard to cover the guys defensively. You got to fight through the pick. 
Thibault not able to hit. And possession to North Carolina. The arrow in the direction of the Tar Heels. Warren Martin checking back. Dave Thompson sits down. In comes some more shock troops, keeping his team fresh. Knows he got Georgia Tech on the ropes. Don't want to let him off the ropes. Kevin Madden replacing Jeff Lebo. That's Madden with it. Here's Wolf. Twelve points for Joe Wolf and a 14-point lead for the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Got to get it back into Price's hands. Georgia Tech playing without two of their starters in foul trouble. Not serious trouble, but Bobby Crimmins knows he has to have him for the second half. Dow Rimple and Sally. There's a double team again. Foul by Wolf. Wolf inside left arm on the hip of Farrell. Up above, he did not touch him. That's Watch the this. By Wolf. Watch the inside arm. Inside. See the inside arm there? That's where he pushed him off. Two guys. So here is Wayne Farrell, most improved player on the Yellow Jackets in the ACC last season. Dave Thompson in for Joe Wolf. Here's Thompson. Wolf sits down. 12 for Wolf. Two personal fouls. He wants to shotgun the fouls. That means that he wants each one of his big men to have two fouls each at halftime and no one to have three. Two a piece on Dowdy, Thompson, and Wolf. That's the name of the game. This is Matt back out from Smith. Martin's too strong in there. They're in his own. Smith. So the ball back to Georgia Tech. Madden stepped out. Minute 25 left, first half. Bobby Crimmins would be tickled pink if he can knock this down to nine points. It's a 13-point spread right now. Oh, great deal with his second field goal of that from long range. So it's an 11 point North Carolina lead. Try to float it in Anna Martin. Hell stopped. Hell rejected and last touched by the Tar Heels. Slide over, slide over. What, what athletes out there. Unbelievable program. Again, Georgia Tech a little short on the bench. A seven man rotation means all the use of seven. Dean has gone to 11 or 12. And a reach in called on Smith. No, great team. Watch the situation here. That's early. Bobby Crimmins can get in nine down. He'll be tickled pink. Plus, they'll have momentum. And plus, they got Dow Rimble and Sally not in that serious a foul situation so they can play the second half. One and one. Georgia Tech uh, not shooting well on the line. Terrible. A lot of those shots are going to Now, Dean Smith should play for one shot, I believe. He'll take it down to five or six seconds, then take it, and uh, Popson and Mont will go inside and try to get the rebound and put it back in. Georgia Tech will stay back in their zone, milk the clock. Bobby Crimmins would be tickled pink to get in nine down. And you see the clock running down. It's time left, first half. They'll start their movement with about eight seconds to go. Gone to man-to-man -man here, then they'll go back to the zone. This is only playing possum. That's all they're doing. By right, Kenny Smith. <laughs> and Martin banging it home at the buzzer. At the half. Here in Chapel Hill, number one, North Carolina, leading number three, Georgia Tech by 11. 
North Carolina leading Georgia Tech 42-31 as we head to the second half here in Chapel Hill. A look at the halftime stats. A lot of shots for North Carolina. 38 to the 20 taken by Georgia Tech. Surprisingly, North Carolina shooting 47% and still leading by 11 points. What happens is they're getting so many putbacks, so many cheapies. They are absolutely destroying them on the board. 21 rebounds to 11. And second uh, shot opportunities. Look at North Carolina with 11. And the Yellow Jackets with only two. There's the individual scoring. Mark Price, six for eight from the floor. And the only man in double figures with 14. Dougherty has 13. Wolf has 12. He's just a couple of points shy of a, a new career high. No. Marv Albert, Al McGuire. And we get underway in the second half. Second part of the college basketball doubleheader here on NBC. This is Price with it. Georgia Tech in possession. Correll. And it's now 42-33. Georgia Tech down by nine. And the arrow favors the Tar Heels. Setting the Tar Heels. Steve Hale. Kenny Smith at the guards. Joe Wolf with the ball up front with Warren Martin. Brad Dougherty. This is Hale who has been quiet. Wolf wide open. This is Carolina's tall team. Across the baseline. Doherty, Martin, and Wolf. The land of the Giants. Nice speed off. Sally back on the floor. Up front with Hammonds and Farrell. Darable and Price at the guards. Darable with three personal fouls. Darable not able to hit. And the rebound is covered by Hammonds. Hammonds broke his drought. First basket fell asleep on D. Wolf able to save it. Unselfish. Martin reached in that time out of frustration. He had to rebound and then lost it and reached in. And now two fouls apiece for Martin, Wolf, and Doherty. Ball dances around up there. He had it, lost it, now he reaches in. There's the foul. Mark Price checking with Bobby Cremens on the Georgia Tech bench. Cremens calling out a play. Cremens gambled. He's not in a bad position for all the gambling that he did the first half. And Doherty for Smith. This is Hale with Sally back. Six points for Warren Martin, 46-35. The Tar Heels by 11. Offensive foul on Price. Joe Forty was right on top of that pole. He's the lead official in this game. He's handling Martin the ball now. This is surprising. Dean Smith, he has the 6'11 guy take the ball out. And the ball goes into the pro's hand. Smith, the only guy that Carolina can't afford to lose. Kenny Smith. Here's Martin. And Hammonds. Neal, who just checked back in. So Neal and Darable now have the guards. By sitting down, Sally off the face. It's been a rough one for John Sally. Neal throws it out. It should be two if Wolf is free. It's just... 16 for Joe Wolf. He's what you call a poacher stamp shooter. If he's free, it's going in. He can't score off the dribble. In comes the crowd. Dal Rimple got to get going if Georgia Tech expects to win this game. And Darrimple has been quiet and playing with the three fouls. Neal for Darrimple. Nice play. Back in the game. Give Hale credit for taking Dal Rimple out of the game. Look for the goon to Doherty this time. Take it around. Whoop, that's a walk. Talking about Hale and the defensive job he has done. Michael Jordan says that Hale is the toughest defender he'd ever faced in college ball. Yeah, he's tough. He had nice moves. He went really a slight little back door then. Hale made a defensive mistake by turning his head. His father will speak to him over that move. 
His dad, Jerry, the uh, one-time head coach at Oral Roberts. Jordan talking, of course, about going against Hell during their practice session at North Carolina. Georgia Tech down by 11. Neal off the fake. And again on the fake. Number today, give it a spin. Price sit too long, no matter what the foul situation is. They all say, dance with the girl you brought to the dance. They got you there. And again, the crowd right at it. The decibel level up very high here at Dean's Gold in Chapel Hill. Beautiful move by Hannah. Could be a possible, no, it won't be a four-point play because it's not the one-to-one. -one. Georgia Tech can get the ball out. Possible four-point play that way, but not from the foul. He's working. Oh, Silver Fox, young Silver Fox. He's only 37 years old, Al. Well, I shouldn't call it Silver because the precious market, Silver's down. Yes. Let's call him Platinum. All right. Madden, come out of that foul. We'll be right back. North Carolina maintaining the lead they had at halftime. They lead by 11 as we resume. It'll be Georgia Tech ball in their front court. Price is back in. Price with it. They try to trap him. And of course the foul. Got to remember, you cannot run an offense out of the corner. Rebound Hammond. And here come the Yellow Jackets. Hammond could be the best center in the country, best freshman in the country. His third field goal. He's averaging 13 a game out of Crestview, Florida. And he has brought Georgia Tech back within nine. See, they needed someone to replace Javon Joseph, and this freshman come in and done an excellent job at it. Matt getting it down low. His, his first field goal. Steve Hale had a 28-point game against Duke last week. Price. Yes. Does he release quick? Price. 16 for Price. And again, North Carolina by nine. Carolina got a small team in here now. Martin out. They look to pressure more up for it. Tech with a chance to chip away at that lead. Pharrell for Sally. Should be two. John Sally with only a second field goal. He has six. So it's now to a seven-point lead. Well, they're bumping and grinding underneath. It's just wearing Sally out. Every time you move against North Carolina, you get bumped. Look up. What a beautiful baby hook. Gonna have to get Wolf out of there, Marv. He's starting to breathe hard. Yeah, that ties a career high for Joe Wolf. 18 points. He is the high man for North Carolina. And they look to trap Price, and again he has trouble. Oh, he pulled him down. Hale pulled him down that time. Jim Lebo, Warren Martin, Dave Foxen come in for the Georgians. And the foul on Hale. That is his first. Earlier in there, watch Sally get fed the ball down low by Pharrell. He gets a little bump there. Down he goes. Should have been a three-point play, possibly. After he got up, he started limping. Substitutions, Dean Smith inserting. Jeff Lebo, Curtis Hunter, Warren Martin. So Steve Hale, here's it from the crowd as he sits down. Dave Popson also coming on. As you're watching from home, watch as, the, as Martin starts to tire of Popson. You call the substitution before Dean Smith makes it. So only Kenny Smith remains on the five that were on the floor. There's four. And a foul call against the Tar Heels. 
Dean won't gamble as much the second half as he did the first half. He went 10 deep in the first half. He'll probably go eight, maybe possibly nine deep in the second half. And the ball committed by Martin. That is his third. There's John Sally. Two shots. Good move by Bobby Grimmett. Waited too long in the first half to rest out. Hammond's an excellent foul shoot, 82 percent. One point. He hit 22 in a row. Looking for his eighth point. If they stop him this time, we got ourselves a game again. That's seven points. In comes the sky blue fan. North Carolina has led by as many as 14. It is now down to seven. Carolina trying to go back door here with Georgia Tech's overplaying and then man to man. Man and ball movement. That's the big one. Jeff Lebo with his second field goal. He's shooting 58% from the floor. North Carolina is the top shooting team of the nation at 58%, and Georgia Tech is second at 57%. See what the call is, the basket counts. The basket counts. This is where Dow Ripple, he's a tank when he goes in there. He's been kind of quiet the uh, first half. The second half, he started to bust out. This is the second basket. But that's a costly basket because he picked up the offensive foul. That's number four on Bruce Dow Ripple. You want to rest him? Can't rest him too long. Got to keep this game under double digits, Mark. And Sally returns. Greg Neal replaces Darable at one four. Sitting down. The difference between North Carolina this year and last year, the difference is Lebo. Nice block by Sally. Goal tendon. Good call. Dougherty gets credit for the field goal. Up goes Hammond there. Sally move into the picture. Right. Ball was on. It's downward flight. 15 for Brad Dougherty. And a nine-point North Carolina lead. 12-20 to go in the ball game. Again, they trap Price. Here's Neal. Now hell on Price. Sally off the turn. Push his hands up in the air, but he's moving his body into Sally each time he shoots. Watch this. Every time he shoots, you see Darty does that a couple times in the first half. When he puts his arms up in the air, he looks about eight feet. The refs aren't watching the hips. Third foul committed by Hammonds. Someone got to get the hail. Whoa. set good timeout call 11 point north carolina lead will be back in a moment who goes back door on hammond here hammond took a peek at kenny smith it only takes a split second he won't make that mistake as he matures and moves up to be a sophomore or a junior 20 points for joe wolf a new career high for the junior out of wisconsin Nine field goals, two out of three for the line for Joe Wolf. He's the high man of the game. Mark Price leading Georgia Tech with 16. Price being pounded by Smith. The difference in the game so far is in the paint. 28 points for 13. Carolina. Noodle. And he goes last to hit Greg Neal with his third field goal. Now has become a personal favorite of ours. Noodle, that's because he's so thin. Nine point North Carolina lead, 11 20 left of the game. Constant man movement, ball movement, well coached. Wow. <laughs> 17 for Dougherty, who beats Sally down low at a 62 51 North Carolina lead, maintaining the lead they had at the half. Uh oh, uh oh. Yes, and it counts.
Wentz as Joe Wolf comes up hobbling. I think they banged knees. I don't believe it's serious. I, sh I know I shouldn't say that, but I just think they banged knees underneath. Check of the scoreboard. Indiana over Illinois by two. Clemson knocking off Wake Forest, 46-43. Oklahoma beats Kansas State, 83-80. Bobby Knight had two closes in a row. Two, three days ago, he beat Purdue in OT. I, I feel that his knee hit the other fellow's knee, and uh, it's just like um, uh, hitting your funny bone in your elbow. Right, here's another one. Right there. See, right there. Now, Hammonds was lucky because he has the knee pad on. Dave Popson coming in for Joe Wolf. And Dave Popson replaces Joe Wolf. Wolf picking up the foul, his third. Hammonds gets one shot. And Hammonds looking to complete three-point play and looking for his 11th point, all 11 here in the second half. He was blank in the first half. Eight point, North Carolina lead, 62-54, 40 remaining in the game. Georgia Tech goes to his own, looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. Going to have to overplay Lebo. He can hit from the outside, so can Hale. This is Popson, who just came on for Wolf. Lebo put it up. And we are down to 10 on the shot clock. Dougherty. Oh boy, what a shot. 19 for Dougherty at a 10 point North Carolina lead. Hammonds, the hot man, hits again. Basket Only a freshman. 13 for Tom Hammonds. Georgia Tech will not lay down. Carolina by eight. Oh, Jeff Lebo with his third field goal has six, 66, 56. Number one, North Carolina. Record of 19 and 0. Playing only the second game here at the new Dean Smith Student Activity Center. They opened up with a victory over Duke last Saturday. Morrell over Dougherty. And a foul on Morrell. Just the inside of the building is completed. Outside still means a lot of work in the offices. But what was happening, they had to get the games inside here. Every game that did not play here, they lost $80,000. They still had a little hammering to do as we watched practice uh, yesterday. The hope was that the uh, arena would be ready back in March of 85. Grinding underneath, he broke three, three, uh, uh, he broke three from the baseline. I was going to show earlier. If you watch when North Carolina's are in their half court offense, what they're doing is just banging bodies underneath constantly. One, one shot. Foul committed by Dwayne Farrell. Three on Farrell and Bruce Dalrymple now makes his return. He's playing with four. One of those games for Steve Hell actually missed a foul shot, 85% free throw shooter. And from the floor, uh, he was 0 for 5 in the first half. And the Tar Heels take over. I think it's about time for Dean to start milking that clock a little bit. Not too much, you call it milking. Try to break through the seven minute mark. Now watch the picking underneath. They're just throwing bodies at each other underneath. Sally got a piece of it. God, he's an All-American. He has a very quick release for a guy seven feet. This match is the biggest lead of the game. A 14-point margin. Here's Price getting in. Mark Price with 18. It has been North Carolina throughout. They've maintained the long lead. Georgia Tech led briefly early, led by as many as three very early in the game. And 
and a foul on Sally, his third. Much authority here. You take an inside position. Price can't do too much. Uh, uh, sorry, Sally can't do too much about it. He just has too much body. Once he gets the ball down low, he's tough. Dowdy a senior, but he's only 20 years old. One of the youngest players ever in the ACC. He was a 16-year-old freshman. Warren. And he was hacked. Tom Hammonds picks up his fourth. What happened here in the first half, Georgia Tech got in such a foul situation that everyone is in a, a gray area. You now have Dalrymple with four, you got Hammonds with four, you got uh, Sally with three. So, getting close to where they need a miracle. Martin, a very fine free throw shooter, now has seven points in all. He has started the last three games. First start of his career. And North Carolina now leading it by the score of 72 to 58. Gang, if you control the paint, you control the game. Basketball is played three feet from the rim. I like that. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit too serious today. You know why? Because they're going for number one. The athletes are so great, and uh, so I haven't been kind of reaching in this game. I've got to start loosening up. Oh, this is serious. Yeah, I'm going I serious. See. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm going to cry out. 14-point North Carolina lead. It is number one North Carolina, looking to make it a record of 20 and 0. Georgia Tech comes in at 16 and 1. They come off the win over Duke on Tuesday. They've won 15 in a row. The only loss that was early in the season at the hands of Michigan and the steal. Madden and Smith combining on the thievery, but Madden not able to hit. After a timeout, Dean Smith will always come up with a wrinkle. That was a set zone with a trap. Created the turnover he wanted. Neil and Price and Darrymple now on the floor. They go a three-guard offense. Darrymple is rejected by Martin. And the save by Madden. Kenny Smith getting it down. Steve Hale on a reverse. And rebounded by Tom Hammonds. Now Rimple had to pull up that time. Doherty. Sally over Doherty and a foul. I don't know, Marvin, any possible way you can go over Doherty and Martin. I still believe that both those guys go around 7-2. <laughs> well, they list Martin at 6-11 and a half, and you always have to be suspect when they <laughs> say and a half. Wolf is 6-10. Doherty, get this one, 6-11 and three quarters. And Joe Wolf back on the floor. He came up hobbling earlier, so apparently he's all right. Jeff Lebo returns. John Sally has been very low key this afternoon. He's had his difficulties. Well, that baseline, they've been alternating men on him, and they've been bumping and grinding. Seven points for Sally. Gets it back. Price met by Doherty. Now Sally in a crowd, and it counts. But Laskett and the foul. Could put him right back in the ball game. This could be a four-point play. He got the first three, puts it down to ten if he makes this. I believe that Georgia Tech has to start putting pressure up court. The clock has now become their opponent. We're under seven minutes, just under it. We got six minutes and 57 seconds. Dean Smith is thinking on the other end, hey, this guy beat me three times last year. I don't want to throw a party. And Sally missing his second in a row. Steve Hale committing that foul on Sally. 11 point North Carolina lead. Again, the bumping and grinding down low. Here goes Doherty in. There's Smith bumping underneath on Sally. Smith with room. Oh. And the foul on Hammonds, and that is number five. This is where Georgia Tech has serious problems. They got nowhere to go. They got to go to Mr. Ford right now. That's a big loss. Tom Hammonds or with Harrell. All 13 points in the second half. Call 
underneath. Watch it right here. Here's what did it. This game has been played above the rim. A standing young man could be, in my opinion, the most influential freshman in the country. Tom Havins fouling out, replaced by Dwayne Farrell. Nice pass from Neal to Farrell. Big swing there. Wolf had a one and one and missed the front end of it. Come back for two points. So it's down to nine. Six, 20 left. Now Ripple's playing tentative. He has four fouls on him. Dougherty. Rebound Wolf. Joe Wolf with 22. Batting up on Neal. Wolf. Hale reached in that time. Guaranteed that was on Hale. And Lebo returns, Madsen sits down. Hale picks up his third, three apiece on Hale and Wolf. Martin has four. Both teams are in the one and one with 550 left. Dean wants to get this game over with. This three losses last year to Georgia Tech is an albatross around his neck. When you're king, you want to stay king. We always know when a new guy comes in on the block. Bobby Crimmins is the new guy. And you know that when you're good, you know when someone else is good. Otherwise, you wouldn't be good. That's why you're good, Todd. <laughs> I was waiting for a conclusion. Pressure by Georgia Tech. Tar Heels able to penetrate. Beautiful. Well coached Tar Heels there. And it's North Carolina by 11. Five and a half left of the game. Here's that trap zone. Terrible. Pharrell on the rebound. 11-4 Pharrell, 76-67. Georgia Tech trailing by nine. Georgia Tech has to reach down into their guts now. Lebo and Hale now in the backcourt. I keep the ball in Lebo's hand because Dalrymple has four fouls on him. Well, they're actually going through guards. Kenny Smith also out there. And Wolf. Hell shooting has been way off, but Wolf getting to it. Not enough rebounding power to counter Carolina's power. Resetting the clock up to 45. They'll milk about 15, 20 seconds here. Another second chance for North Carolina. Ball and man movement. Smith finding Lebo. Carolina's in that zone. They're going to trap in the first pass. Here comes the trap. No, them went to more of a stationary zone. Watch for Price to shoot from the outside. Here it comes. Yes, Mark Price with 20. Did you like that call, Ma? Now <laughs> you are increasingly astounding. Yes. And <laughs> turning it on as the uh, game goes down to the wire. 78-69, a nine-point Tar Heel lead. Watch the bumping underneath now. It's legal what they're doing is they're picking away from the ball down low. Wolf will bump. Now Wolf will swing away. There's Lebo. And Darabal leads the break. Neal. Oh, by Wolf. Here comes the hailstorm. He'll pull up, bring it back out. Nice play by Farrell. He'll get a piece of it. Darable with Lebo back. Basket counts. And let's see how they call it. They're going to call the one and one down the other end because both teams are in the one and one. It's a blocking foul. The call against North Carolina. Lebo. He's, he's saying no guts. He was looking for a four point play. What happens in this type of play, if the ball leaves the man's hands before the contact, then they can call charges. And I believe the ball did leave his hands before he committed the charge. So it's almost like even it out. Here it goes. Now watch Dalrymple. Lebo does have both feet down. He is planted. Bobby Crim 
Simmons in this situation, the whistle was late, and he knows he's not going to have too many more runs at North Carolina because he knocked it down then to seven points. If he would have got the two fouls, he's back home in this ball game. As long as you have Price out there, who's a super All-American, anything can happen. Now, wait a moment. If the foul was called on Darable, that should be number five. And Darable still on the floor. North Carolina players are pointing at him, and now, now he'll get the call. No, no, Dalrymple has to go to Pine City. <laughs> Some of the uh, Tar Heels pointing at Darabal, asking why is he still there. Now he departs. Antoine Ford back in now for Georgia Tech. Fremen's also upset about the uh, extra time that was run off the clock, and it was reset. Now we have 3.16 remaining. When I said here earlier, the only difference in North Carolina this year and last year is their Lebo better. And Lebo with a very strong second half. 10 out of his 12 points in the second half. A timeout, North Carolina leading by nine. We'll be right back. You got a nine point spread here. Dow Rimple, if this calls the other way, and I think the call was right, you're looking at a five point game. The ball's out of his hand, the basket's good. They give Lebo two shots down the other end, you're back to a nine-point game. But Marv, a five-point game with three minutes and 16 seconds, and with an All-American like Mark Price out there, anyone could win it. And now Dalrymple has fouled out. That was his fifth. A look at the uh, scoring rundown. Price with 20, Dowdy 21. Wolf has been uh, the key guy, a 22-point performance. He averages eight a game. That's a new career high for Joe Wolf. And Lebo off the bench for 12, 10 of the 12 here in the second half. So we're down to three minutes remaining. Here's Price with long range. Oh, long. Oh, that was from the locker room. <laughs> 80, 73, Georgia Tech down by seven. Wow, he's going to get very close veins in his arms. And he has been shooting from that range at the pace of 60% the last 12, 13 games. Here comes the eating up the clock, kill the clock as much as possible. They'll catch Georgia Tech in the back door. Too much hands on him, Ford. Antoine Ford committing his first. Tomorrow afternoon here on NBC, starting at 1 Eastern time to get Super Sunday underway. Notre Dame and these top-ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina. Digger Phelps, of course, Amanda's pulled off a, a number of super upsets. And uh, we're told that Digger is somewhere in the building. Our crack NBC staff not able to locate him. You know Digger wants to get on camera also. Well, you know what he is probably being from the Catholic University. He's probably up in the Bobby Yuka seats, oh. the nosebleed seats. <laughs> Wearing green. <laughs> With a lapel, flower in his lapel. Oh, he's leaning on him. Sure, he had to call that. He was leaning right on him. Now the foul on Dougherty. That's his third eight-point lead for North Carolina with 2.42 remaining. And the one and one at both ends. John Sally will go to the line. All right. If he can make these two foul shots and create a turnover, this game is not over. Mark sitting down. The Dean Smith the Shuttle continues, Lebo back in. Sally has missed his last two uh, from the uh, free throw line. He's three out of six overall. Oh, that was a trick. An absolute trick. Dean got his delay team in there now. Three guards, they'll spread out a little bit. Work the clock. There it is, they're spread out. Come on, gang out there, call it before you see it. I'm talking to the fans. Here's the four corners, the famous four corners that Bill Ford. Back door, automatic. <laughs> Steve Hell has hit it. Carolina has 83-73. We approach two minutes left of the game. Burrell. He's got it by Hell. Spread it out. Set up the back door. Clinic A. Here it is. There's the four corners. Watch them go. Small man penetrate, kick off. There he goes. Penetrate, kick off, buddy to the left. There you are. There you go. And the foul on John Sally. Would you say that uh, Kenny Smith is the quickest guard in the country who plays under control? Yeah, he's quick on, obviously quick, 
He's the only guy that Carolina cannot afford to lose. They can replace everyone else. What you're seeing out here is that a team with 10, 11 players is better than a team with seven players. I still believe the start and five at Georgia Tech is better than the start and five for North Carolina. A team with 10, 11 outstanding players is better than a team of seven. Oh, North Carolina has no bad players. They have good and better. 85-73, 12 point, Carolina lead. There's Price, Burrell, Verniel. We're down to a minute and 40 remaining. John Sally will go to the foul line. He started out early with that pink elephant in the back of his head, John Sally, because of the size of Carolina. Dean should make the substitution out, take one of those big men out. Here it goes. Take the big man out, put the little guy in to delay the ball game. Coming down the other end. Oh, is his fifth foul? He still would have taken him out. He would have put three guard offense because the clock is more important. Warren Martin fouling out, leaves with nine. So Lebo makes his return. One of Lebo's biggest assets, he plays without the ball. Most coaches' sons can do that. Most coaches' sons can also make fouls. Play, guys, play! Good job there, young guy, Warren. You really surprised me. I, when you started playing here, I thought you were a cupcake. You ended up being a great asset for the university. I need this guy. He's had an outstanding senior year. Warren Martin out of Axton, Virginia. Now they're, they're, they're trapping early. They'll spread it out. Give it to the better foul shooters, Smith, Hale, and Lebo. No team has three better foul shooters than those three guys. Spread it out. Get to the foul line as soon as possible. And Hale throws it back for Wolf. I have a back door that the Dowdy that time, Hale. 15 on the clock. And the time running down. It's time left of the game. Georgia Tech's win streak coming to an end at 15 in a row. North Carolina will make it 20 straight. Offensive foul on Smith. That was a crumb call. It was time to just throw something into the pot. Here's one for Bobby Crimmins, that type of thing. <laughs> well, you know, this time, I thought the refs did a great job. Matter of fact, we have not had to second guess one call today. And I'd like to really congratulate Joe Ford. He's a food broker for Franchise L. Schwartz out of Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little prime time plug here. Yeah, I thought maybe they'd send me a box yeah. or something. Maybe they get a few. <laughs> Working along with Jerry Donahue and Bob Taylor. Oh. There's four. Come out. To go to the timeout pitch, so the next 49 seconds will probably take six minutes to play. So with the timeout, uh, we will pause for these words. Hey, notice uh, Al huffing and puffing, just uh, chasing around the building, still looking for the missing Digger Phelps, who has brought his club here to face the Tar Heels of North Carolina tomorrow, starting at one o'clock on it'll NBC. Be, it'll be a black and blue game tomorrow night. It'll be a Tomorrow afternoon will be a physical game. Stay around. You'll enjoy it. What about a club like North Carolina coming off uh, a game against Georgia Tech, but they won it very badly. They had dropped three in a row last year to Georgia Tech with the, the emotional situation following this going into Notre Dame tomorrow. Back to back. Digger Phelps is sitting in the right position, and I know he's a psychological coach. You go back, he loves to do his thing, fast. and he's in a good position. Because big guys cannot, big young men cannot be turned to the second game that quickly. The guards can play any amount of games in a row. North Carolina getting by the pressure defense of the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech, Lebo. This might be a two shot foul, the intentional foul. It's an eight point lead. Here's Neal. Seconds remaining. Gonna ice it out. Schoolyard hockey. Congratulations to Dean Smith. Job well done. And Georgia Tech will get him back to their place next year. Well, that's an offensive foul on Brad Dougherty. They will shoot the one and one. Down the goal then. Oh, they're not going. It wasn't possession. They will meet again at the Omni in Atlanta on Tuesday, February the 4th. 
Georgia Tech will take on North Carolina State at North Carolina State on Wednesday. And that will do it. So Dean Smith tomorrow will try to make it 21-0, which would be the fastest start in his coaching history. An 85-77 win for North Carolina. They make it 20 at all. Georgia Tech has the win streak stopped at 15. Joe Wolf, the key man, a career-high 22. Brad Dowdy at 23. And Mark Price with 22. This is Marv Albert with Al McGuire from Chapel Hill. Thanks to our producer, Kenneth Roy Edmondson, and our director, Harry Coyle, our statistician, Ross Schneiderman. Again, the final score, North Carolina 85, Georgia Tech 77. We say so long from Chapel Hill. In a moment, Len Berman back.